Watchdog Ministry is a really uh, important ministry out there over at the park, uh, reaching out to homeless and folks that uh, need to be loved on. So always keep them in mind, keep them in prayer with our ministry. Okay, guys? So we're going to go ahead and get started with worship. So all right. let's all stand or sit or whatever you guys feel like doing. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Enough. 
Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, oh, and you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. And you say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you Matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. Love for me 
Oh, His love for me. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free. My father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh it's free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am my father's house there's a place for me i'm a child of god yes i am i am chosen not forsaken i am who you say i am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am who you say I am who the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Like a fire shut up in my bones I want the world to know You are God With a passion burning deep within I want the world to know That You live your presence come and saturate every part of me make me new let your spirit come and move within fill me once again cause I need more Jesus 
I'm desperate for you. Jesus, I'm hungry for you. Jesus, I'm longing for you. Cause Lord, you I'm longing for you, cause Lord, you Hey, you know, the best part is she's getting sweeter by age. That left hook isn't quite as vicious anymore. I can duck one out of three of them. <laughs> How cool, huh? Oh, gosh, what a week. You know, I want to... Uh, 
the praise song that I uh, caught this week. Just listen to some of these words and tell me if some of the things that you haven't gone through in your life or you may go through now uh, feel like this. It says, I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Might have heard that as a kid from somebody, you know, or, or how's this? Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Dang. Or how about this? Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Ask Papa. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. And if you ask him, he'll let you know. And, and he'll answer those questions in a way that puts you at ease, give you peace. Very cool. Way praise band, you guys are knocking it out tonight. Thank you. Here we got Chelsea all by herself up here. We need some. We need another singer too. Not that we need him to cover up for, her, just so we can compliment that. So very cool. We love you guys. We love you guys. Got ushers. Hey, you know, have you ever had uh, multiple bill collectors fighting to get their money from you? <clears throat> you know, the IRS. He says. That's a tough one. But you know what? Something happened this week when we had multiple organizations trying to give us money. And they were fighting over who was going to give us the most money. You know, we, we, we have, uh, because of Rhonda and her crew and Grace House and all that goes on, we're highly favored with the mental health agencies in Sacramento County. And we don't go get grant money. Uh, we, let, we trust the Lord to provide for the finances of Grace House. So we don't go out and, and uh, apply for grant money, but these mental health agencies get a lot of grant money. And so they decide where they're going to spend that grant money. And two, TLCS and Hope Cooperative were having a knockdown, drag out fight over to Grace House in front of Ron to, to see who would give the most money to Grace House and support us. So how cool is that, huh? Very cool. Very cool. Six thirty-eight. Jesus makes a remarkable statement about how God responds to your giving, and it's about how God gives Himself. This verse gives us kind of a glimpse of God's perspective on our giving, and Jesus says, "This give, and it will be given to you." Well, how does God give? You might have heard the phrase, "You can't outgive God," and that's true. And most people don't understand that phrase, what it means or its implication in our lives. The entire verse says this, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. Then comes the kicker. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And so that means if you give generous measure, Papa God will give you back in generous measure. But listen to this. Believe me, his generous is a whole lot bigger than your generous. You know, remember we're not given to get. The reward is the reward for faithfulness in our giving. So that's an absolute with God. And so he makes no exceptions, plays no favorites. You begin by giving a little bit then God shows you what his giving is like so that you know how to give from then on. <clears throat> he gives so much that it runs over. In fact, he presses it down. He shakes it up to make sure that it runs over. This is how I give to you, says Papa God. So let's pray. Remember his promises. Lord, thank you for this ministry and those that are so faithful in their giving. Thank you for the way that you allow us to touch lives in this ministry and and we can we do that because of the faithful givers. And uh, as we learn to give, Lord, teach us by your example of how you give. I'm going to pray for this offering tonight, Father, that you'd bless it, that you'd multiply it, that you'd grow it and grow it and grow it so we could reach more, touch more, and love more for you. We pray these things in your holy, precious name, Father. Amen.
And here in your love, here in your love No place I'd rather be No place I'd rather be No place I'd rather be Than here in your love, here in your love So set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain, that I can't control I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. And here in your love, here in your love, no place I'd rather be, and no place I'd rather be, and no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. I want more of you and less of me. I want more of you and less of me. I want more of you, more of you, Jesus. Then here in your love, here in your love So set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain, that I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God brings back old time memories preaching with a mic like this <laughs> amen some of the old preachers they like to use these mic stands and get them out like that <laughs> I think I'll take it off if I can well God is good all the time uh, we, all, all the time, God is good, and all the time, He's good. And who's He good to? Amen. He's good to us. He's good to me in my house. Amen. Wow. He's awesome. You have your Bibles tonight. Turn with me to John. I'm going to go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I was going to minister this last week and the Lord changed it. 
And this week, I uh, he kept putting it back on my heart, so I knew he wanted me to share along these lines. And then tonight, just about everything saying and said goes along with what the Lord is, was ministering to my heart. Uh, somewhere I have some notes in here about it, but I can't find them. <laughs> so the good thing about it is we rely on the Holy Spirit. And uh, I really I really preached for about, about 30 years, probably without notes, just... I would just use the Bible and preach out of it because I figured that's all the notes you really need. But uh, as I got a little older, I thought maybe I better write down a few things so I remember it. But uh, nobody knows about that in here, do they? But anyway, if you got your Bibles and you want to go there, John, John chapter 1, verse 1. It said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I like the way that they capitalized in the New King James. When it got to the Word there, it capitalized. It's capitalized, so it's, it's to stand out, but it's, it means something. You know, when the Bible talks about God, and it, it refers him to as him, he, it always capitalized. Any Anytime you're on Facebook and you say, and you put God in there, you should capitalize it. And then if you refer to him as him, you should capitalize it. Because he's not a little G, he's a big G. <laughs> Amen. He's not a little God, he is a big God. But in the beginning was the Word. And that word, Word, in the Greek is logos. And it, it is a expression of God. It is the very image of what he's talking about. It's the very expression of him and the very image of him. He's the logos. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. It's pretty good. It's pretty plain right there. It's pretty clear. He was in the beginning. It was the Word. And then he was the Word, was with God, and he was God. He was in the beginning with God. So from the beginning, when we think of beginning, we usually think of a date, a time, a set time of when it began. When something happened, you know, when something great happens in our life, we have a date for it. And, and we can remember the beginning of something that was wonderful in our life, so we have that date, and we can recall it. But in the beginning with God, it, it, it's bigger than that. <laughs> because in the beginning, to us, it's, it's infinity. We just... We can't comprehend. The, the Bible says he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It, it's, it's hard for our mind to fathom that kind of person, that kind of God, because our mind just doesn't really stretch that far. We just can't actually grab a hold of that. But he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. You could put yourself there. Everything that was made was made by him. So everyone sitting in here tonight, you were made by him and through him. And the wonderful thing is we know because in Scripture, it tells us he created us in his likeness. We're created like God. This is what's so awesome. When he created Adam, did you know he created Adam perfect? Because he was in the likeness and the image of God. He was created perfect. And then how did Adam fall if he was perfect? God didn't make a mistake. But what he did, he made him perfect, but he gave him choice. 
Because when he put him in the garden, he said, I have two trees in the garden. This one over here, he said, I don't want you to eat of that tree. He said, don't, don't touch it. Don't eat it. Don't do it. But Eve went over and saw the tree and saw it was good for food. And the Bible said she was deceived by it. And then she offered to Adam. And when she offered to Adam, he took of the tree that God told him not to eat of with his eyes wide open. You know what I mean by that? He did it on purpose. Because had he not ate with Eve, they would have been separated. They would have been torn apart. God would have removed Eve from the garden and left Adam. But because he loved her so much, with his eyes wide open, he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He disobeyed God. Through his disobedience, many people came into condemnation. But by the obedience of one man, many are brought into righteousness. And so... We find out throughout the Word of God, there's always two men. The Word of God's always talking about two men. It's always dealing with two men. And we're with Adam, it was Adam and Christ. Adam brought condemnation to the world. He brought condemnation to mankind. He, 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 he took men and man was taken out of the garden. Now in that garden, there was also another tree that was called the tree of life. And the tree of life, if you partake of that tree, you will live forever. So God didn't want them living forever in that state of condemnation. So he removed them out of the garden and he puts an angel there with a flaming sword to keep them from coming in to the garden. And so they, they could not get back to the garden. They could not get back to the tree of life. And no one could partake of the tree of life until Jesus came and gave his life because he was the tree of life. He is the tree of life for you and I today. So we can partake of him right now. And now when you partake of him, you're going to live forever. The good thing is you're not going to live forever in condemnation. Because all things now have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Like I said last week, we, we are passing from death unto life. Adam killed us all. Jesus brought us back to life. We're, we're leaving the old Adam and we're coming into the new. <laughs> the Bible calls him the, the, there was the first Adam and the last Adam. And the reason why is because there's not one in between. It was Adam and Christ. And there's not one in between. So there was the first and the last. The first killed you. The second one brings you life and brings you peace and brings you joy and brings you happiness. But the Word of God is very powerful. The Logos is very powerful. And, and throughout the Word of God will find that declaring the Word of God, declaring His Logos. And there's another word that's used in the Word of God for the word word. When it's translated word, it's rhema. Everybody know the word rhema? You've heard the word rhema. It's rhema. And so rhema is the command of God. When God spoke a word that was a command, or Jesus spoke a word that was a command to His disciples, that was... That was rhema to them. Jesus told his disciples one day, he said, I want you to go and cast your nets on the other side. Peter said, Lord, we've, we've toiled all night. We've, we've fished and we've toiled and we've caught nothing. But, <laughs> good thing for the conjunction there, but at your word, at your rhema, at your command, We'll go out and we'll cast out the net. Now the problem was, Jesus said, go out and cast your nets. Nets is what? Plural. And Jesus told him to cast your nets. So Peter obeyed to a point. He went out, well, they just got the nets cleaned, all ready for tomorrow. So he only takes a net. 
And the Word of God's so fabulous, the way these things lay in the Word of God. And he takes a net out, and then he catches so many fish that the net began to break. <laughs> Couldn't hold all that he was catching. That God is phenomenal. You know, when God does a miracle, he always, it's, it's just, it, it's like ongoing. And if we listen to him, really listen to him, then we will, we will continue to experience the miracle of God, the thing of God. In the Old Testament, a widow needed money. Her husband had died, left her in debt. She was going to have to sell her children to pay off her debts. They went to the prophet, and the prophet said, go out and borrow vessels, not a few. <laughs> not just a few of them, but go out and borrow a lot of vessels. And so they went out, and they borrowed a lot of vessels. And then he said, take that oil that you have in your house. She said, I have just a little cruise of oil. She, he said, now begin to pour that in those vessels. And she started pouring and pouring and pouring. Did you know she poured until every vessel she brought in was full? <laughs> Phenomenal. If she would have understood, she, she would have been shell oil today. She should have got lot, she should have got more than just a few vessels. She should have got some barrels and just kept pouring. Because the miracle of God, it, it, it'll do exactly as God says. Because when God speaks a word, it's a command. And God has placed in our heart that same authority, that same right to de declare a rhema over things. We can make a command of things, not demand. There's a difference in demanding, and we're not demanding God that you come and do this. God's, God's Word is not telling us that. But we can command the things that God puts us over, and as we command it, then all of a sudden we, we will begin to see it happen. And then I've had God speak to me just like He did Peter. He, he has spoken Ramus to me. He's given me Rhema Word. Over the years, I've experienced this Rhema Word. I, I remember just... One time we were coming back, we was, we were back into Oklahoma, I think we went back and ministered there. And on the way home, we were traveling and we, as we come, we come up, uh, 395 and we got to Tahoe. And when we was in Tahoe and I was driving through Tahoe, looking over at the lake, how beautiful it was. And the Lord spoke to me, or aim a word. He told me, he says, when you get home, all your finances and everything that you have need of is going to be taken care of. And I knew that when I left, there was some things I need to get back, I need to take care of. I knew, I knew there was some big obligations that had to be done. But the Lord spoke that into my spirit. I knew right away, just like he spoke to Peter. I knew right away when I got home that this was this was a rainbow word from the Lord. And when he gave me that word, it was, it was, it was a command in my life. I knew it. I didn't, I didn't drive home thinking, I wonder how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen or w the way it's going to happen or how it's going to happen. But when I got home, it was there. <laughs> the, the miracle was there and it did more than meet the need. It went way beyond the need. And back then, that was several years ago, when when four or five thousand dollars was like twenty thousand today. I mean, it, it it just just amazing. One morning, I woke up. As soon as I woke up, the Lord spoke to me and said, "That day, He said something good's going to happen to you today." I, and I think Oral Roberts got that from me. <laughs> but the Lord spoke to me and He said, "Something good's going to happen to you today." So all day long, I'm going around expecting something good's going to happen to me today. Something good's going to happen to me today. And I was just expecting it. Didn't know where, didn't know when, didn't know how. I ran to the post office, looked in there, nothing. <laughs> you know, I, ran, I went down to the church, looked through the door, you know, to see if anything. Uh, nothing, nothing there. And the day passes by, and it's about 8.30 that night, and I'm in the kitchen, and I was cleaning up and doing a few things. And I thought of it again. Something good. Today's not over yet. And about that time, there was a knock at the door. And I opened the door, and there was one of our young men standing there. 
he was one of our worship leaders, and he goes, I've got something for you. And he had a big smile on his face. And he hands me this, one of the church envelopes. And inside that envelope was a big check. And he's standing there because he don't even know. He said, my dad told me to give this to you. And so I get it. And then we're talking, you know, and we're talking about the weather. And it was kind of turning cold and it was about to snow. And, and he's standing there and he goes, he goes, well, aren't you going to open it? <laughs> I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to open it. Oh, oh, you want to see what's in it. <laughs> and so I opened it up and we were blessed. And I, then I told him why God spoke to me that morning. That's something good. And I tell you, it was something good because it was right on time, right what was needed. God is always faithful, but that, that's, that's the word of the Lord. And, and then in the word of God, it tells us, the apostle Paul says, I believe, therefore I speak. I believe, therefore I have spoken. So, what does the Word begin to teach us? It begins to teach us that we can begin to declare things. We can begin to speak things. And some of the things in this song tonight, people have heard so much negative about themselves. Many, many people growing up have heard a lot of words they should have never heard, should have always heard of life and uplifting and encouragement. And uh, so many times, many of us grow We've grown up, and we didn't hear those things. You know, I remember in school, my parents were, they were awesome. I, I had wonderful parents. But I remember in school that, you know, they would vote on people in the class who was going to be most likely likely to succeed in life. Anybody ever win that? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> if they had one in there at that time that says, the one most likely not to succeed, they would have probably voted me in there. But as a young man, I had that kind of complex. But when Christ began to teach me how to declare over myself, I realized I can speak life over myself. I don't condemn myself. I don't put myself down. Even in struggles, even in situations, I never put myself down because God one day revealed to me that I belong to him and I've been bought with a price and that I was precious indeed unto him and that I should never speak against what he has done and what he's declared. And so I have to get in agreement with what God says and what God is declaring over our lives. And so we can begin to speak the things of God. Just like, you know, God taught us how in Genesis chapter 1. The Bible is in, in, in the first chapter of Genesis, it tells us that God said, like the first one, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Well, it keeps saying that, and then God said, and then it says it again, and then it says it again, and God said, and it goes through nine areas that God said. And then the next statement was, and God saw. <laughs> what did God see? God saw what he said. God said it, and then God saw what he said. Everything in the kingdom of God is voice activated. Everything that belongs unto God is voice activated. You're sitting here today because God spoke you into existence. God said it, and here you are. And then he didn't finish there. He said, and God said, it is good. <laughs> Period. Didn't say anything about being bad. He said, it's good. So you, you and I need to be in agreement with what God is saying. Because God is speaking good over us. God is speaking life over us. God is declaring victory over our lives. And so we need to get in agreement with God and declare the same thing that God says. And so we need to speak over ourselves. Rise up in the morning. Begin to declare over your life. Speak the rainbow words that come. Speak the logos. The expression of God. Speak and declare the things 
that God has put in your heart. Declare over those things. Speak over your your call, the, the call of God that's in your life. And every one of you are called of God. There's not one person sitting in here that is doesn't have a call of God on their life. There's a call in your life. And it's not too hard to find. Because a call of God in your life is whatever your passion is. And, and when you begin to yield to it, actually you can't keep from doing it. You can't keep from being what God's called you to do and the purpose that He's, the plan He's put in your life. You can't keep from it when you grab a hold of it and realize that's the plan of God. That's the purpose of God. That's what God wants for my life. And then you start declaring victories in it. You just start, start declaring that you, you're, a, you're a winner in it and you're not a, you're not one that's defeated, but you win. You're victorious in everything. And so as you speak and declare it, as you declare every day, you need to arise and you need to declare over yourself. You need to declare what God says about you. Find what he says about you. Get in agreement what he says about you. You'll find out that God's for you. He's not against you. You'll find out that, that, that you're more than a conqueror. You know what a more than a conqueror is? A conqueror, that's pretty good. Just to be a conqueror, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, be a conqueror. More than a conqueror is the guy, he's the guy that went in the boxing ring and he's in the big fight, the $30 million purse, and he tr trades blows with his other opponent. opponent. And he wins, and he walks out with a big purse. When he gets home, he hands it to his wife, and she says, thank you. She was more than the conqueror. <laughs> that's what Jesus, <laughs> that's what he did for us. He conquered, and he made us more than a conqueror. Whose wife are you? Who's your husband? Who are you? Who are you joint up with? Amen. He's mine. And, and I'm glad because he has, he has won me the victory that I can walk and declare the victory of God and walk in the victory of God, not in defeat. There is no defeat in the things of God. There's always victory. And, and you know, I, there's a saying I hear it every once in a while. Uh, it's a, it, to me, it's a religious saying. And, and they say, well, we lost this battle, but we haven't lost the war. Uh, it kind of sounds positive, but I don't even want to lose a battle. According to my Bible, I, I'm not even going to lose a battle. If you understand, we're not going to lose a battle. Any enemy, did you know any enemy that's out there, Jesus has already defeated them? And you know what he said? Here's what I've done with them. I've put them under your feet. What do you do? You walk on them, he said. So I put them, I've, I've already, I've already won for you. So all you have to do is walk. You walk it out. God's put him, God's already defeated the enemy. He's already put, he's put him under your feet. And, and, Man, I've gone to some churches. They talk more about the devil than they do about Jesus. Jesus is the victor. Amen. He's the, he's the one that wins. It's, it, you know, it's like, you know, I watch pro golf sometimes. You know who they talk about? Not the second place guy. They talk about the guy that won. He's the one that gets all the publicity. He gets the, trophy he walks out with a trophy because he's the one that won and so we should be talking about Jesus and declaring what he is and who he is and that we belong to him that we're on the right side amen and that he's working big time in our life to create something that is beautiful and God determined before time what you are and what your call is and what your purpose is before time ever begun. In the beginning, 
the word was already spoken over you, already declared over you. And, and some people have been deceived and not understanding that that word has been spoken over them and they need to walk in what has been spoken and what, what the word of God declares us to be. And so if God can say, and then, and then God can see, and then God says it's good, you and I, Jesus said this to you. He said, you can say unto the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you believe in your heart, do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things that you say, not, not what the pastor said, those things that you say shall come to pass. If you will believe and not doubt in your heart, if, if you'll believe that, he said, it shall come to pass. When I was a young man, I read that scripture. I went out, looked at a little hill, and I commanded that hill to move. Well, that hill didn't move. It didn't move at all. I was wanting God to do literal stuff, you know. I was wanting to show everybody, hey, this is the God I serve. Watch this here. I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna move this little hill over here. When we moved to Grass Valley, we, we lived, and we lived right by our church, and right over here there was a big old mountain. And I didn't like that mountain there. I couldn't see it. It blocked our view for forever. And so I'd go out there and I'd speak to that mountain. I'd declare that mountain. I, I declare you to move. One day, some people pulled up out there with a rig. They had a bunch of caterpillars and chainsaws, and they cut down trees, and they flattened all of that, and they put in a Kmart. That, that mountain was removed, <laughs> and I wanted to take the credit. I, I declared that mountain to move. <laughs> but, but many times we, we want to see God do, we, we want to see God do things, you know. We, we just, when I was young, I was full of, as, as someone said, vigor. And I, I wanted to do everything, and I, and I found out the Word of God isn't always in the literal sense, but it's a spiritual application. It's a spiritual work, and the spiritual work that He's doing is inside of us because you're very precious on who you are. You're very important to God, and what God wants is the mountain of your life to be removed. God wants anything in your life that's hindering you, that's keeping you from moving forward. He wants you to speak to that mountain and get it removed. And it's amazing how fast he will move those mountains when you believe in your heart and don't doubt. God will move those mountains, and then you will have whatsoever you say. God will literally move mountains for you. I've watched 35 years in one area of ministry, over 45 years total of ministry, I've watched God do one miracle after another, after another, after another, declaring, declaring the Word of God, speaking the Word of God, releasing the Word of God. But it begins right here. It begins to yourself. you got to speak to yourself. The Bible says, speaking to yourself in hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Amen. We need to do that. We need to speak to ourselves with psalms and songs and making melody and singing unto the Lord. Uh, there's nothing greater than singing unto the Lord and praising Him. And then what He'll do is give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. God will work and you and he'll make you like trees of righteousness under the Lord. And, and it's tremendous what he will do. Then you'll, he'll set you by the river of water like a tree and you'll grow and your life will bring forth fruit. It'll bring forth fruit and it'll develop fruit. And, and that's, God's not demanding fruit. That's just a byproduct of just obeying Him. God's not judging you on how much fruit you bear. doesn't do that. A lot of people have used, I think it is, in, in 
Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, a lot of people has taken a lot of that out of context and used it in the wrong way and kind of beat people up with it. And that's not why if you read the whole chapter, if you read the whole thing, you, you just can't take some things out of, out of its context. You know, it's like the person, you've heard this, I'm sure. It's like the person, you know, how they studied the Bible was open the Bible, point the finger down, and, and that was going to be their verse today. And then, so this guy opens the Bible, puts his finger down, and it says, and John went out and hung himself. And he goes, oh, no, that must not be God. And he flipped it over and hit, and it says, go out and do likewise. <laughs> so I don't, rec I don't recommend you study the Bible that way for your guidance. I, I recommend you study the Bible. I never studied the Bible to preach. I've never studied the I never studied out a message that I'm going to preach. This is what I'm going to preach. This is what I'm going to say. And, and, and study that out and do it all out. I never, I, I don't do that. I study the Word of God for me. I study the Word of God to place it into my heart so that when I preach, when I minister, I'm preaching from here. I'm not preaching off paper. That's why, that's why I don't use notes. So it didn't bother me that I couldn't find my notes. It didn't bother me. Because I know I have the Holy Spirit, and I know I've studied the Word of God. I know what the Word of God is inside of me. It's more, it's more important to convey what's inside of you. Sometimes you feel like maybe you're not really helping anybody or doing anything. You will be amazed how many people you help just by speaking what's in your heart unto them, speaking the life of God, releasing the life of God. You can change a life so quick. And so fast, just by a kind word, just by speaking life over them. Tell people they're wonderful. Tell people they're awesome. Let people know that you appreciate them and, and what they do. That's important. And we all need that. How, you know, everybody needs a hug now and then, right? Everybody needs a pat on the back now and then. And what it does, it can, you can make a person's day. You can make a person's week. You can make a person's month by sharing something good and make an impression upon their life because it's not about me. It's about you. It's about your life. Ministry is about your life. How can I help you? What can I do to put something inside of you that you can take and walk in and declare and do? And, and so God, God shows us. He shows us by doing it. And then he says, here you go. You go and do this. You do it. You walk this out. I made you in my image. You go declare something good. You go speak something good. You go speak a word over somebody. It was last year, in the middle of the year, I hardly ever was on Facebook much. I'd turn over, see something. I like seeing what was going on with my relatives and friends. And, and so I'd turn over and see some. But the Lord spoke to me sometime last year, right after the COVID broke out. And he spoke to me. He said, put a scripture on every day. And every day the Lord would wake me up and he'd give me a scripture and I'd put it on Facebook. It's amazing how many people responded and said, I needed that word today. And all I did was scripture. I, I think maybe twice out of, out of 12 months that I added any saying with it or because you know, I wasn't trying to manipulate somebody into thinking something. I just gave them the word. And so many people responded back and said, don't stop doing this. This, this is helping me so much. Just something simple. Something so simple is just sharing life. So simple of just saying, hey, brother, I love you, man. I love you. Appreciate you. Just simple. I don't really do. I, I mean that. <laughs> and I and I really appreciate your heart and your tenderness before the Lord. And and the Lord loves that. And and never feel bad about it. And Jesus loves you more than you could ever dream. And and he wants to just release more of himself in you. Just that your whole being is filled with him. And you have something, there, there's something special 
that he's put in your life that it hadn't come to full fruition, but it's going to. Amen. So God's not done with you. He's just getting started with you. Amen. You shouldn't have touched me, man. <laughs> Praise God. God's good. He's so good. Amen. Let's stand. Let's give him some love. Hallelujah. Just put your hands out in front of you to receive. Father, I just receive you tonight. I receive the word. I receive that engrafted word of God into my life. I receive the rhema word. I receive the logos, that expression of God in me. Father, and I walk out your word. And Father, I release upon the people tonight, upon every heart, every person, every being that is in this house tonight, those that are watching my live stream. Father, I just touch their lives. Minister to them right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them with the glory of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. We just release it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. God love you.